Hi, this is Talena with Girly Garage. We are going to check out some of the new innovation here at SEMA 2024 for this whole video. Make sure that I can keep making videos. Smash that like and subscribe button and turn on your post notifications. with Tony. This is his 1957 Pontiac and it has been heavily modified in a way that I actually see the future going. Now take a quick look at this. We have taken a six liter um, engine out of an actual Hummer, which you would not think is fuel efficient. But do you see this giant engine here? This is actually an electric engine out of a Tesla. Now this Tesla actually makes this vehicle a hybrid so that that zero to 60 range where the car is usually guzzling the most gas, it is now becoming more efficient. So can you give us just a little bit more highlight on this vehicle or maybe some of the yeah. fun things that are in it? Absolutely. So as you said, this is a stock six liter out of an H2 Hummer. And we ended up attaching the electric motor to it via the belt with straight to the crank. And so that basically like so you this said, has all been modified here correct and you just got a bit much bigger belt correct okay yeah this system right now is we actually ended up retrofitting this tesla motor here a couple weeks ago so this functional or this system is not quite functional we were running a 50 kilowatt three-phase ac electric motor before and with that system on it it was a fully functional system and it was pushing about 150 foot pounds of torque and it ended up taking this stock six liter to the point where we were averaging about 40 to 45 miles per gallon, getting up to 70 miles per gallon and pushing about 500 from, horsepower. From 1957. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Correct. So and you basically have the emissions or the fuel economy of a Prius in a way cooler car. So Yeah. With a lot of torque. I right. mean, I don't think my Civic oh, yeah. has 150 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> no. And it's <laughs> with the system that was on there. I mean, it would basically pull the pinion into the floor pan when you got onto it. It was... Fun to drive. Was, yeah, real yeah. fun to drive. It Did you have to upgrade up. like the axles or anything um, when you do that? It needs it, but it hasn't been done. <laughs> okay. but <laughs> It's I, running stock suspension. Hell yeah. I love the fact that you're still innovating. So it's right. like you had a system that worked, but now we're testing out this Tesla motor. Yep. And that's pretty cool because you and I were talking about this, but like when Teslas, when their batteries die, that's the part of the, the minerals that can never be replenished. Right, And right. so there's a piece of this car that we can still upcycle yep. and use for other vehicles. Now, the other funny thing is like, you know, you travel a lot. I try not to drive that much right but when you do drive let's say you run out of electricity it's not like you can just run down to the corner and get a bucket of electricity right. yep. but on this system you were saying that this is really special because when the electric dies you can still use the internal combustion Correct. engine separately yep. and yeah and it doesn't necessarily even officially fully die it basically kind of reverts to its most economic mode which will give you about a 25 percent fuel savings oh, increase cool and so but when we initially did this car back in 2016 SEMA got a hold of it and they took it to their emissions testing facility and wanted to see what the numbers were on it. And it Amazing. actually ended up doing a 50% reduction in emissions too. So you have a good partnership then with SEMA. They're like here supporting. Yep. Yeah, Jonathan, Fantastic. the individual who is the designer behind this, he has been working with SEMA for quite a while. He's been in the industry for quite a while as far as the, the alternative fuel source in its energies and whatnot. He's dealt with the hydrogen, dealt with the electric yeah. and everything else. So he's real familiar with it. Man, well, thank you so much. Seriously, Absolutely. this innovation is freaking cool. And I really see this being our future instead of just being like one lane. Absolutely. Because this can be applied to literally any, any aspect, any car. Yeah, and the, the main amount of cars, it's going to be seeing a lot smaller electric motor. Yep. This one we did to kind of stand out. Yeah. And this is what well, we're starting to work. you said this is designed for a Freightliner, right? Yeah, like, so yeah. yeah, we were going to be putting this onto a Freightliner yeah. truck. So, I mean, that's but what my, my our My Honda initial... Civic, it could be like this big, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, with the advancement in the technologies on the electric motors and batteries and everything else, everything's just becoming a lot more powerful and a lot more compact. So yeah. it just opens up a lot more options. That's super cool. Man. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.
We're here at SEMA 2024 and we're actually with Katie and Katie has done some really cool innovations to this 1986 Porsche. Now what, what actually makes this thing so cool? So the coolest part about this um, Targa is that it is a Singer engine. So it's a 3.7 board out to a 4.0. It's a G50 five speed manual. So which can we just pause there? Because yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand what that actually means because you've taken a 3.7 liter engine, which mm -hmm. is already a pretty good size engine, yeah. bored it out to four liters, yep. which means it's getting even more power. Yes. Okay, go for it. Yeah, so especially with the Singer, so it's built by... Singer. Yeah, it's <laughs> built by Singer or Ed Pink. Um, and then uh, we also have a e-machine by Vonin. Um, which is between the engine and the transmission. Mm -hmm. And it basically makes it a hybrid, but it's more efficiency for the power. So and, can yeah. I ask you just about that? Cause I'm super curious, yeah. like the engines here, the yep. transmissions here, yes. right? And like, it's just something in the middle that's delivering power. Yeah. So it replaces the flywheel and then, oh. so you put it there and then it basically. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. And, and then, then Go ahead, sorry. Sorry, no, go ahead. <laughs> what part did you contribute on this? Like, what's something that you loved about working on this? Other than, um, like, almost cutting your hand off. Yeah. That's not a loved part. <laughs> that wasn't a loved part. <laughs> um, I think just being a part of it, um, there was a lot of stress with it. And just, like, seeing it done was probably just my favorite part just because it was a ton of work. Yeah. A lot of late nights, a lot of early mornings just to get it done. Um, but And did you, little, did you guys drive it in here? I think they tell So it drives. It does drive. Okay, yes. good. Cool. Um, we took it to the track. We took it to Willow. So it does drive oh, really yeah. nice. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm going to give you a, um, a high five since your hand is, is messed up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being here and yeah. like for the work that you do and for representing women in the industry. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. Really great. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Thank you. I'm here with Brad, and Brad has a hydrogen-powered boat engine here, which is super interesting. Brad, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Sure. So uh, Yamaha actually developed a hydrogen-powered uh, outboard. It's actually internal combustion. It's not a fuel cell. It's based off of the XTO 450 platform, and it runs on compressed hydrogen gas. I know you've said this a lot today yes. because you're an expert in this. I want people to understand that you said this is a hydrogen powered internal combustion engine. That is correct. So that's incredibly different than a hydrogen fuel cell, which is similar to like a hybrid setup where it's converting um, hydrogen into energy. But this is actually porting hydrogen directly into the engine instead of actual fuel or petroleum, right? That, that is absolutely correct. So it's actually a direct injection. So the fuel system that we have that was designed by Roush actually, uh, has awesome. three has three fuel tanks that are at about 10,000 psi, okay. and it steps down to about 150 psi when it hits the injectors. And so the reason that we're doing all of this is carbon neutrality. Okay. Uh, Yamaha calls it multiple technology solutions. You'll hear people say multiple pathways. There's a lot of different terms for it. But what that actually means is is that in order for us to achieve carbon neutrality, there's more than one way to do it, um, rather than a single technology being dictated. So what we're because some technologies, EV, for example, does have some limitations, especially in a marine environment when yeah. you're going offshore. So internal combustion is, is a very viable option. So how do you produce a product that is going to be effective and people want to use, mm -hmm. but also achieves carbon neutrality? You look at this and you start looking at hydrogen. Yeah. And actually, I personally, I have a really interesting question, which mm -hmm. is, where do they store the fuel? It's on the boat? It's on the boat. So do you have to design a fuel system that can now hold hydrogen? Because that's a little different than gas, right? It's a, it's a lot different than <laughs> gas. So uh, hydrogen has its own uh, peculiarities, as, mm -hmm. as we could call it. Uh, with it being the smallest atom that it is, leakage is actually an issue. So, oh, when, okay. so when we needed a fuel system designed, we went to the experts at Roush. Roush okay. has a 20 plus years experience working in hydrogen. They've done projects with NASA, a lot of other people. So they actually came in and designed a fuel system that is safe and doesn't leak and also provides the fuel that we need for this outboard. Amazing. So that can actually be replicated. Yes. And then put into the consumer market. So you could almost take an engine or a, a gas tank, a fuel mm -hmm. tank that exists in a current uh, boat. No. Swap so, it out. So no, it's only so, going on new boats. So, well, what... I, as far as retrofitting, yes. um, you probably could, but I think you would probably do better to not do that okay. because in order to put this particular system in, the entire deck had to be off before it went in and gotcha. then you add the deck to gotcha. it. So retrofitting might not be the most efficient way to do it uh, because the, the fuel system currently 
is quite large. We're hoping that in the future, as the technology develops, yeah. that that fuel system is smaller. Yeah, so it also, becomes more compact with time. Exactly. The other thing is, is that this boat was retrofitted to fit the, the fuel system. So the engineers at Roush came through and cut up the boat. The engineers at Regulator came back in and helped make it stable and make sure that it would perform. Um, I bet they if, had if, fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so if they started at the beginning where they're designing the boat around the fuel system, yeah. you would it would look completely different. Okay. Well, this is really interesting because we are in the innovation area. Yes. I'm super stoked to see some innovation that's coming down the pipeline mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily one or the other, right? Right, right now we're in like fuel mm -hmm. or EV, but like this is kind of a nice marriage of something new that's coming down the pipeline. And that's what we're supporting and SEMA's in lockstep with us. That's why, um, you know, that's why you have a, an outboard engine at an auto show. Yeah. It was also what, we, what we've seen is that the automotive industry and the marine industry have similar issues as mm -hmm. far as technology and regulations, those sorts of things. So while we're simultaneously, we're simultaneously working on the R&D for this, mm -hmm. and then also working on the regulatory infrastructure side of things, those need to mature at the same time. Yes. If you have one that goes without the other, you're not really, you're not achieving you mean anything. like AI? Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so what you're doing is, is if we have both of these, if you have the regulations and infrastructure mature at the same rate as the technology, when they're both ready, they're both ready. Yeah. And I'm sure once this is complete, literally, like if you just change some of the ways that the uh, oiling goes, that you can put this in, in regular vehicles, right? The thing is, is that the bulk of this engine is our XTO. They, okay. they changed out very few of the parts, basically fuel rails, some of the injectors, those types of yeah. things. But the bulk of this engine is actually what it already exists. It already exists. Yeah. So the good thing about that is if and when this goes to production, mm -hmm. we've already sourced all these parts. We have the manufacturing set up, so producing it becomes a little easier at yes. that point. Yes. Dude, this is so cool. Thank you so much Thank for your time Thank you so much. Today. We appreciate, appreciate you. you. Yes, ma'am. Let's check out this Toyota Tundra. Now, why is this cool? Magnuson has put a bunch of cool parts on here, including the intakes. Now that's this red part that you're looking at and the see-through air boxes here. Now the cold air intakes are actually retaining those lower air box trays. So you don't actually have to modify that part specifically. They're integrated with hydrocarbon traps and designed to optimize the airflow while actually providing that visual enhancement. So they do still look pretty. They've also done an intercooler upgrade, an intercooler radiator upgrade, and an exhaust system upgrade so that this whole system can work together to make this vehicle more efficient. This is ADOS. Now you may have heard this word, but you have no idea what it actually means. It is already in all of our newer vehicles, advanced driver assistance systems. Now this is, if you take a close look here, we actually have radar, LIDAR, camera systems, and ultrasound already in our vehicles. Now these systems cannot be turned off. They cannot be reset. And actually, if you check this one out, they have already been passed into law. So by September of 2029, this will be implemented that your car will be braking for you. Now this again, cannot be deactivated. So this is something that your car will have control and not you. We could not possibly have captured all of the innovation here at SEMA. So if there was something that you saw or that you wanted to see, make sure you drop that in the comments. If you want to dive deeper into SEMA 2024, there's a ton more content. Check it out on the SEMA 2024 playlist.